What a round, what a fight this has been. Fight of the night, fight of the year. You have witnessed history here tonight. Seriously, who's going to stop him? Fists, feet, knees and elbows, nothing as bad as we welcome you to your only source for the world of kickboxing. It is hammer time and joining me, the encyclopedia of the arts, the hammer himself, Mark Castanini. Another massive weekend of combat sports. It's been a massive weekend and a, a massive week, in fact. So much happening around the country and, of course, Vegas, the UFC, Mark Hunt. It doesn't get any bigger than that. A huge Aussie contingency heading over in support of the Aussies on that UFC event. Danny Green, who's been sharpening up the hands of James Tahuna. John Wayne Parr, celebrating his birthday, Vegas style, mm. at the event as well. Massive. And we're still claiming Mark Hunt as a kickboxer, <laughs> make no mistake there. Always have, always will. So much to get through, so little time to do it. Let's check out what's on your menu this evening. The Fighting McKinnon boys here in the studio, both back centre ring as well. We'll go in depth with Steve about Glory 7, the huge show in Italy. And we'll also take a trip to the doctors, understanding uh, fighters' pain. Let's ring the bell to open with and check out what's been happening on the local scene. And we're going to start with Knees of Fury 40. Huge shows. Adelaide lights up and they've done it again in style with a main event. Uh, Lewis Regis and also Kim Johnson. Of course, Louis Regis and Kim Johnson, what a main event mm. for Knees of Fury 40. And uh, Knees of Fury, of course, a great promotion in Adelaide. Kim Johnson gone for all money in the first round. Regis absolutely bombed him in the first, but he came back so well. It is Johnson in the white, Regis in the black, and Johnson from South Australia, Regis from New South Wales. Didn't give each other a lot of room, Hammer. It was in your face and whack. Non-stop, non-stop action. And Kim Johnson, since his big win in China on that New Year's Eve show, he's come back. And the only other Westerner to win on that big Chinese event was, of course, Albert Krauss, one of the best in the world. So Absolutely. an Aussie and, and one of the best fighters in the world winning in China. And I think that has really given Kim, the Adelaide boy, so much confidence that anyone who steps in front of him now, they're going to have a hard night at the office. An ever-improving fighter. And we see this, seem to say that a lot about yeah. some of our young talent, but, but this kid, his curve of improvement in the last 24 months is astounding. It's, it's been a real mental thing for Kim. I mean, he... he I suppose he didn't back himself yeah. as much as he yep. should have. And since his win overseas, as I mentioned, and having a new new coach, a boxing coach, that is also very much working on his mind and thought process and, and positive mental imagery before the fight, he's just, you know, since the loss to Mossy last year, which was a hard fight on that yep. Knees of Fury show, he's come back and he's just he's found this newfound mm. confidence and he fights... Totally different. You mentioned mental attitude. Nothing wrong with the mental attitude of the big fella, the Sting. Paul Slawinski, kickboxing icon here, but MMA, uh, a very real prospect that the Sting is headed that way. Well, certainly he is. Um, of course, uh, Sting, he's one of the best in the world in the super heavyweights, Thai boxing. You know, he fears no one in, in the Thai boxing or kickboxing arena. MMA is going to be a totally different kettle of fish for him of course he was looking at getting involved in the combat eight series yep. until he realized there's no kicking so yeah <laughs> he's, very uh, he's different. rethought that process I, I had a chat with him and he's like you know what he knows his kicks are his strong point so combat eight of course doesn't allow kicks so probably not the, the right direction for sting to head into now this is from kings of combat uh, up against natu lauli uh, paul slawinski he, he's got great power in his in his gloves but his strength is his legs his legs are the size of my waist and <laughs> that's something <laughs> yeah, he certainly has he's got a lot of power in his legs but he he is going to sort of have a bit of a try or a foray into mixed martial arts potentially september in adelaide there's an mma uh, event happening and he's actually as we speak in miami at the black zillions camp training some ground some ground skills trying to see how he equips himself with that style of fighting, and who knows from there where the sting could go. Paul's natural aggression, no doubt a huge bonus in MMA if he does decide to go that route. Natural aggression, it was a showpiece in Mackay recently, Pride and Glory, a huge show up there in uh, in Queensland, and the boys turned it on, in particular Mike Dimitriou, Andrew Keogh in the main event. Yeah, definitely. Look, Andrew Keogh, originally hailing from Mackay, he's, he's fought up there, he's trained up there, he's run a gym 
up there. He is a real identity in Mackay, so of course it made common sense to have him as, a, as the main event. Taking on Mike 300, uh, Dimitri, who's a southpaw, left-handed fighter. Keo has a bit of an awkward style. Yep. 300, very calm and, and composed fighter. Mm. Just wait, you know, played the game right, waited for the right time, and uh, you know, threw a spinning elbow from hell that uh, caught Keo flush, unfortunately. Keo, the local and a crowd favourite, and they were right behind him, yeah. as we can see. Yeah. They, oh, look, they were certainly with well, the crowd. Just they absolutely went off when Keo came out, and you know, he he's, he's had a bit of a time, a bit of time off. He's back. And, um, you know, he's looking to fight again on the next Pride and Glory show. Great undercard too, Mikey, the Tomahawk Thompson up against New Aang. It was controversial, it was close, and already we're talking the possibility of a rematch here. Of, yeah, well, the, the camp from Corporate Box, who are looking uh, after New Aang now, they feel they were a little bit hardly done by. It was such a close fight. Mm. Personally, I thought Mikey, you know, did enough, and, uh, you know, he yep. fought the smart fight. Um, Nguyen was there, you know, for the fight as well, but Thai style. So it really depends on how the, the judges score it. Yep. Of course, the Thai style judging, they favour grappling and yep. knees, and uh, it's a different game. Whereas here in Australia, you, you know, the, the, the judges will score the kicks, the clean punches, and that's what, what Mikey, Mikey's renowned for. One of the positives of our sport, but one of the negatives, Judging is opinion based, and yeah. you're not right, you're not wrong. No, that's correct. And it's hard. Well, and, and different angles will always yeah. deem a different decision in some cases, unless one fighter is totally dominating the other, mm. and then it's quite obvious. But in a close fight, and we saw that with, of course, the Jabba and Steve Moxon yep. fight of a few weeks back, you know, the angles dictated the decisions made in that fight. Brett Crane White and Ben Tan on the undercard. Let's check it out. An odd one, this one, in the fact, extremely close fight, Hammer, until both men fell out of the ring. Well, it was a close fight, Andy. Brett Crane White, Tan, so close. They, they sort of exchanged in the clinch. Mm. Onto the ropes they went, toppled over and out, which, you know, occasionally happens. And um, the fighters returned to the ring. Uh, Brett couldn't continue due to, I think, a, sh a shoulder injury yep. from, from falling out. So he went to the countback. Went to the countback, uh, perhaps shouldn't have, and the, the decision's been contested by Joe Hilton, who's the trainer of Ben Tan, and that one is uh, up for, uh, you know, for the decision to be reviewed at the moment. Petchenong versus Matt King also on the undercard, and, and a huge night for Matt King in the respect that he's now looking at main event later in 2013. Well, Matty Chaos King, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a lot of this lad from Perth, mm. but I was totally impressed by his performance. Um, fighting a, a tie with so much more experience, mm. you know, geez, he's had 10% of, yep. of the fights of the tie. Equipped himself so well that he's been invited to take on Mike 300 in the main event of the next Pride and Glory, which will be, I believe, in Townsville. Coming up in Queensland as well, Muay Thai at the Metro and Aaron TS2 Lee in the main event. Aaron TS2 Lee is back mm. and he is back with a vengeance, taking on uh, Jordan Godfrinson from uh, Darren Kurovic's gym in WA. He is a tough up and comer, but so much less experienced than TS2 Lee. I'm, I'm finding it hard to see him disrupt Lee. You know, Lee is he's a, he's a seasoned veteran. He looks like he's 12 years old, but he's a seasoned veteran and he can fight. There's Lee there with the, the white shorts with the blue trim. He's warring against Daddy Cool, and that was one of the epic battles of the past. Talented, but tough. I mean, ultra tough for a little dude. Uh, they used to call him the, the Harry Potter of Muay Thai because he looks very <laughs> unassuming. But uh, I tell you what, he is, he is tough as, as they come, TS2 Lee, and it's great to have him back in centering. Another that, that's just varying his game up a little bit in the respect that he's having a look at CMT, the caged Muay Thai, and we've got action of him in a recent bout. Um, adapted pretty well, that's him on the front foot there in the, I guess, the aqua. Like blue shorts, yeah. And Lee, like... Just always full ball, always right in his opponent's face. Have a look, downward elbows, knees. He is non-stop. When he gets in the centre ring, it's just going to be action from the opening bell with TS2 Lee. It's great to have him back. Muay Thai at the Metro, that is coming up. I cannot wait another cracking Queensland show. Our show continues here on It's Hammer Time after the break. In the studio with us, the fighting McKinnon boys. Stick around.
Welcome back to Hammer Time, our comprehensive look at the world of kickboxing. Joining us in the studio, the Bulldog Boys, the McKinnon brothers, Steve and Stu, who recently returned to the ring for the first time in five and a half years. Regrets or happy you did it? Definitely happy. Yes, definitely, most definitely happy. It was uh, something a little time, long time coming and, um, like I said, a little itch that needs scratching. Well, of course, the last time, well, before the break, Thor Hoopman. What a huge fight for you to go out on, but not for long. No, nah, well, I thought that was it after that. I, I sort of, I mean, I won the unanimous with points, but I struggled a little bit with, uh, I mean, mental preparation and fitness and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I, I just wasn't quite happy with that. One didn't sit very well with me. And it was just always burning a little spot in the back of me somewhere that needed um, fixing up. So, uh, you know, I got my stuff together mentally and, and physically. And uh, as you get older, you have to train smarter, not harder. And that's what we've done for this one, and it paid off. OK, you came back against Josh Hetty. I mean, you came back deep into the pool. How had training differed in the five and a half years since you left? Um, well, obviously five years older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with Steve training consistently for fights, you know, we've just sort of learned through him that you have to train differently as you get involved. Yep. You just can't push yourself through your fatigue and that sort of stuff, you know. Steve, is it about <coughs> training smarter, not harder? Yeah, it's all about quality, not quantity yep. these days as we get older. And uh, so listening to your body, mm. um, one thing we've always done is train really, really hard and then you end up overtraining. Yep. And then you get run down, then you get sick. So it's just really listening to your body and trusting your own ability. Sue, so your performance here against Josh Hedder, how do you rank it? I felt great. Uh, I mean, physically going in, there was a little a few issues there, but mentally I was 100%, so I could overcome anything that, that threw me at me physically. Mm. Um, so that, that's a big thing, I think, is if, you, if you're mentally 100%, you can overcome anything. Mentally 100%, that's pretty much how I'd sum up these two guys. They are <laughs> always on the always ball, on. and this guy's <laughs> going to need to be. Yep. Glory coming up, but let's go back and have a look at Glory 7 from Milan. And, and Glory, the new K1, if you want to put it like that. This is Milan, Italy. And Steve, for those that haven't seen Glory before, this is a huge deal worldwide too. Yeah, this is huge. Um, you've got the best fighters from all over the world in it. Uh, it's a bit of a different style for me, so I'm just having to adjust to it and, uh, and adapt. And, but this is what I love in the sport. This gives me passion to get better. This is Steve in the white and Michael Dutt in the black hammer. Yeah, you were it? awfully impressed with this performance. It was, it was a great performance. And uh, of course, we talk about the scoring and, and looking at the scoring from Glory, they, they give double points for any spinning techniques, jumping techniques. And uh, I don't know, maybe that was the, the weird scoring here that went against you, unfortunately, and the crowd showed their displeasure with that at the end of this fight. Was that something that you know, you're gonna take into account for, for, your next, for your next battle? Or do you think that that had an impact on this fight? Uh, it had a huge impact on this fight. Uh, I actually thought I'd won it at the end of it. That was the, the shock look on my face. But uh, they score it differently. I'm in a different country, playing a different game. So we've gone away. I've learned a lot about that side of it now. So we're going to train for those rules now. Stu, how difficult is it going into a fight, any fight, where you know the scoring's a little bit different, the criteria from what you're used to? Well, you don't really realise it, actually, until you're there and you think it's just another fight without elbows or it's just another fight without this or without that but you know different country different judges and they just look at things differently and then, uh, obviously that, that's what happened here this is the big show hammer and it the is. fact that, that steve lost but he's coming back it shows how highly they regard him and you're coming back against uh flip valinden of course he's an ifma gold medalist and he's credible you know he's he's got some good moves mm. so how are you going to prepare for him. Obviously a Muay Thai stylist, so that's going to be somewhat easier to read, I suppose. Yeah, but just coming to this, um, I'm working a lot more on my hands, more combinations. I usually power shot single shots, uh, but so we're working more combinations and scoring points, but still I'll always power anyway, so we're just working more scoring shots. Flip Linden having a look at uh, the Dutch superstar here, the Hammerstein Ballroom. Yep. The hammer, hammer <laughs> Stein ballroom. I get a good feeling about it. Absolutely, know? it's the venue, venue, June 22 in New York City. That in itself is an experience, isn't it? Yeah, so Hammer will be there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I will be, I certainly will be always. But uh, we saw Flip Verlinden with the white shorts in that clip and uh, he's going to be a handful for you. 
he's going to be a real handful for me. Um, so I've got to deal with him first. And uh, uh, Tyrone Spong's yeah. in this as well. And he's fighting the guy I fought in my last one up first. I expect Tyrone to win, so yeah. then I've got to look at uh, dealing with him second. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that too. Gee, that's what you call a tough night at the office, isn't it? I mean, they are lining up the big names. Uh, they're certainly going to be earning the money, that's for sure. They're not going to give that 200k away for, for nothing, you know. Yeah, $200,000. Uh, Mark Castoni's weekly pay packet is on the line. Glory number nine in New York City. It is June 22 at the, as we said, the Hammerstein Ballroom, a, a venue that, that seats about 4,000 people. Hammer, it's had, you know, WWE, WWE ECW... All there, all the big names. Buster, Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes. That's got to that's got to get a bit of gangster out in you for this one. <laughs> we saw Tyrone Spong there taking care of business. Of course, he fought Nathan the Carnage Corbett, and that was a battle. Now, if you can get that scalp on your resume, that's going to be huge for you. That's going to be huge for me. Um, just coming into this, putting on a good performance. Um, it's just um, I'm looking at um, just making big things in this glory thing and trying to make some money for myself as well. You and Nathan Corbett, you, you've danced twice. They've been the biggest shows and the biggest fights in, in Australian kickboxing over the last couple of years. Uh, Nathan's won both occasions. How much does it hurt and, and are you still looking at, at going again and having your hand raised? Yeah, I'd love to fight him tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he's a great fighter. Uh, he, he, especially the last one, the first one I was, I was off pretty badly and the, this last one he outscored me nicely um, let me ask you this he's been offered a chance to compete in glory and he's turned it down why do you think he's he's not stepping up and, and doing just what you're doing on on the world's biggest stage the biggest event it doesn't get any bigger than glory now why I don't know because he's a great fighter he should be out there testing himself and to improve himself and to prove himself to the world um, that's my main thing in this sport is to just test myself to see how far I can actually push myself because Corbett's the same he'll even if he does lose he'll adapt and he'll come back and win and that's what I'll do and I'll lose win draw and I'll come back and get better and win and Improve, Stewie. With, with, with Steve and Nathan, many have said stylistically it, it's a wonderful matchup. Do you agree? Well, definitely. I mean, the very similar sort of styles. I like to get in the middle of the ring, just bang heads, really. Yeah. Um, you know, so it just comes down to styles, and uh, and on those occasions, just Nathan's come off the best. Okay, coming out of your last one, let's uh, switch back to you. Shoulder injury. Um, how's that progressing, and, and what's the immediate future hold? Well, um, I mean, as Hammer will know about this, it's uh, severe bursitis. It's just years and years of overuse of holding pads and, and training people and that sort of thing. I mean, if I can sort that out, I'm straight back in there. I mean, mentally, I feel great. Yep. Just um, poor old body a little bit sometimes at the moment. It gives me a bit of trouble. So, Is it a day-to-day uh, -day pain or an inconvenience or a sharp yeah, pain? Yeah, no, it's a constant ache all the time. Um, you know, so I've had plenty of cortisone shots, which the last couple hadn't done anything. Yep. So. You know, they're useless now. And uh, obviously too many cortisone shots are, are not very good for your health in the long run. Mm. Um, you know, but there's other options out there which we're going to look at. And um, as Hammer's going to say, the, you know, tell us what's, what's going on there. Yeah, Hammer, well, difficult life, isn't it? Yeah, the cortisone shots, I think, if, if they had frequent flyer points for cortisone <laughs> shots, I'd be flying around the world. But um, the PRP is, is a new treatment mm. and it's something that I've trialled. And uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting potential option for you. Mm. Okay, let's take a trip to the doctor, Dr. Peter Lewis, with our very own Mark the Hammer Castanini, a realistic look at injuries and rehabilitation in the world of combat sports. Well, guys, today we're looking at PRP, a new treatment for athletes, joint pain, recovery, injury, that's what it's all about. I'm going to be the guinea pig, Dr. Peter Lewis, he's the man that's going to be executing the pain on me. Let's go inside and get the treatment started. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma, which is a new treatment using your own blood to heal damaged areas. It's a process where we separate the cells into the good healing cells and white blood cells, uh, and we throw out the red blood cells, which don't have a healing role, and we inject those healing cells into the damaged area to produce faster healing. We've used it for some of the top martial artists and kickboxers in Australia and from overseas and we've got them back into action in remarkably uh, less time than you'd normally expect. 
The first process is to spin the blood in the centrifuge, and that separates out the red blood cells, which just have an oxygen carrying capacity, aren't involved in healing, from the white blood cells, platelets, stem cells, and growth factors, which are the, the clear, sort of almost urine coloured part of the blood. We then activate that in a, a light box, and that actually reduces the pain of the procedure and also increases the effectiveness of the cell function. This, this is how I tan up. Like instant tan, this one shoulder anyway. Uh, then we uh, usually give some local anaesthetic into the area that we're going to inject. It's like marriage, guys. The first one hurts the most. And uh, then we inject the activated PRP. I didn't have this top on. You'd see beads of sweat running down my chest <laughs> right about now. <laughs> oh, that looks really big, that needle. PRP is a natural form of treatment, so it's not banned by any of the codes. It's not to be confused with the peptides or other artificial treatments. Although the goal of uh, both is the same, which is the early return to sport. PRP being natural, derived from your own body, um, can, cannot be banned really, it's, uh, it's natural. Should try it without the local. <laughs> Should we go towards the light, or how does this work now? There you go, PRP. What about the arms on hammer? I've seen bigger knots in cotton. Oh, Stevie, um, <laughs> now you had a very similar treatment. You tore a calf prior to the Thor Hoopman fight a few years ago. Yeah, we had to cancel the actual show and we put it nine weeks back mm. and, uh, and I went to my specialist and uh, he did the spinning of the blood thing, put it into my calf and then I stayed off it and, uh, and nine weeks, uh, about six weeks, I was back on it and then the last three weeks before the fight, I was kicking again. It's, it, it is a revolutionary new treatment. I've, yeah. I've, even my mother, who's in her mid-70s, has had it in her knee. So, guys, this is really something that if you've got joint pain, mm. it's not only for athletes, it's, it's for everyone. So maybe uh, check it out. I've got to ask you, how, how is your shoulder and, and are you recovering better than you, you normally would? There's, there's one thing, I suppose, that I should do that I don't. And rest. you'll yeah, and rest. <laughs> yes, we don't rest. So I get the treatment done and then I'm like, oh, I've got to go to the gym and hold pads. And yeah. It's not smart. OK, back to the gym and holding pads, these two guys. How is the gym, uh, the Bulldog gym, and in fact being back as an athlete, not just a trainer? Uh, it was a great buzz of the gym um, and actually to share the, the change room with um, some of my young guys and the fighters mm. that hadn't seen me fight before, you know, it was, it was an awesome feeling again to be just be a fighter and, and not be a, a trainer there for a bit, it was great. Sparring would be reasonably intense I'd imagine with yourself and <laughs> Shane Moods and the big unit over here. Well, we could sell tickets to our sparring sessions, yeah. you know what I mean, so that, like you said, we've got a great crew of people to spar with and all big guys that, that can move around. And, t and tell me... The up, up and comers, so I want to get both thoughts on both of you guys. Who do you guys rate as the great up and comers that we should all be looking out for in the sport now? Well, from our, our gym, we've got uh, Simon Mayer, who's, uh, who's a, a cruiserweight. He, he's 7 and 0 now and knocking everybody out. And we've got a young kid, Nathan Robson, who's 17. He just won a, an open age Australian title. He's 7 and 0 as well now, too. And, and from, the, from the greater community, I suppose, from, from around the country, anyone stand out? Oh, well, you've got the young guys from Queensland that are always um, you know, on, on their game. The quality of, of fighters now mm. compared to back when, you know, when we were, yep. people having 7 or 10 fights, so yep. like back when we were signing, they're having 30 fights. So yeah. the quality and the science of training is just so much more. It, it really is. This, yeah. it, the, the training methods are so much more advanced now. Right, yeah. What information is available yeah. to trainers? we the to guinea pigs, so to speak. Exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> Big show coming up for you guys too with Immortality 5 just around the corner. Well, that's the next big one, so uh, hopefully I'll have myself sorted out and mm. you know, the injuries will be good then. And you never know what might happen for that one. It could be both of us on there, so uh, it's never been done before. Mm. Um, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> R run us through the preparation because the countdown's begun to, to Glory 9. Uh, 22nd of June? Yep, uh, 22nd of June. I've just come off, uh, it's been four weeks now since the last fight. Mm. So a few weeks rest, easing back into it. It's my whole new thing now about uh, quality, not quantity. Yep. But uh, because I was fight fit four weeks ago, I don't want to peak too soon. Yep. So I just take it easy, easing into it, um, covering some handwork. I would, I would say with, with looking at the scoring system, maybe some plyometric work, maybe some, some jumping techniques could be you know, on the radar. We know that that scores well for you guys now, so 
I'm just putting it out there that I think that could be something to have a crack at. Well, we'll have to uh, definitely try everything mm. here, but you know, Steve sort of is not one for the uh, the big flashy jumping yeah, I'm stuff. Not one for any f- uh, <laughs> flashy jumping stuff, but I, I'm I'm keen to learn and work on it. You know, I've you know you know my me my yeah. style is here and strong and forward. All grunt, yeah. You know, but uh, we'll see. I need to uh, mature a little. <laughs> Certainly look forward to it, and it has been great having these two tough dudes in the studio with us. I'd like a crate next time so I can stand and be up level with you guys. A wonderful show. Plenty more coming up on It's Hammer Time. Next week is a belter. Bangin' Benny Edwards in the studio with myself and the Hammer. We're going to profile the three-time world champion Andy Housen and fight tips with the Hammer return. Our insight. Hope you've enjoyed It's Hammer Time. To Stewie McKinnon, we thank you. To Steve McKinnon, we thank you. And wish you well in your endeavours in New York. We hope you've enjoyed. Keep your gloves up and we'll see you next Wednesday night on Hammer Time.